All right, let's go out to San Antonio and talk to Veronica Mars. Hey, Veronica, what's up? Hello. How are we um, doing? I'm doing good. Thank you. How about you? I'm doing well. Thank you for uh, hopping on here. We had somebody cancel last minute, and I appreciate you uh, joining us. What's up? Well, um, <laughs> I um, I hope I don't come as uh, as just thinking about myself in this call, but I guess I might need some hard truths. My question is... Hold on, Veronica. Before, hold on. Forced... Veronica, before you ask, who told yeah. you that thinking about you is bad? What? Somebody told you that well, ju- just thinking you know about what? Veronica is no good. I know. Who, I was not expecting that, but... Who told but you that? Just after listening to the previous call, it's kind of hard to think, well, you know, uh, I should... Uh, <laughs> You know, why am I just thinking about my perspective? So I said, I may hear some hard truths in this call, but um, I said, All we'll right. find out. I think your perspective matters, but go ahead. All right, go ahead. Go for it. Yes, yes. I mean, it's important to me, and that's the reason why I sent this question. So my question is, um, should I continue to force my teenage sons to attend church? We've been having this discussion for a long time where I have to be nagging, where I have to be telling them we're going to mass at a specific time. Like that's the only thing that I kind of won't let them get out of um, in addition to going to school. But but it's this constant battle and there's this debate, especially with my 15-year-old son, who uh, I think the more I push it, the more resistant they are. And I really don't want to push them away from religion or from um, having or finding a connection, you know, with God. But um, I I just don't know which better way to get them closer. Or And I know that, you know, well, I come from a religious family, but but... I have found throughout the years, especially as I'm older, that um, that just having this church connection gives me uh, some food for my spirit, and that has helped me so much on the hard times. So my hope for them is that whenever they're older and they're going through hard times, or even now, that if they lose hope in the world, that they can just you know be able to say, God loves me, and kind of reach out have that kind of connection, but I'm not sending the message somehow. Um, there, um, I just feel like, like we just keep talking about it and there's no, no, uh, no agreement. No, I'm, we're not going anywhere with this. Okay. Hey, you're not crazy. It's a great <laughs> question. And I promise you millions and millions and millions of moms across the country are asking themselves that same question. So thank you for being brave. Okay. Where's um what's dad's opinion on, on all this? Um well he says actually <laughs> um um yes, he supports my statement. Like sometimes I've been having to like call and say, Hey, can you please talk to them or something, right? So he supports the fact that yes, they need to continue, yes, they need to go. Uh, but the example shows a different way. That's, hey, all, that's all I care about. Yeah. Because your kids yeah. see it's you. Like, uh, your, your boys see you. When things get tough in your life, they see you pray. They see you go to church. Okay. They see you talk to your church friends. When things go sideways yeah. in their dad's life, they do not see that. They see him turn to other things. Yes. Yeah. So it doesn't matter what he's saying. It matters what he's doing. I had one great psychologist that I worked with um, as part of a practicum. And he told me, Dr. Gomez, he told me, the kids don't listen to you. They watch you. So if you want a particular behavior out of your kids, if you want them to treat people right, to treat people with honor and dignity, if you want them to work hard, then you work hard. Then you treat people with dignity and respect. If you want People, to, if you want your kids to believe that faith is a central part of a well-lived life, then they have to see that reflected in their parents. 
Otherwise, it's just it's just a thing I got to get up and go do on Sunday morning, and I'm tired. Yeah. And so, I don't like the word force. Okay. Um, but you have every right to say, if you're going to live in my house, you're going to live by my rules. And in my house on Sunday morning, we go to church. The conversation's over. We're not having the conversation anymore. It's what we do. Okay. And you're going to ride with me. Yes. And I think it's fair to say when you're 18, you can choose to make the choices that you want to make. When they, when they're 18 and out of my house, because yep. if I'm, they're still my dependent. That's right. And, <laughs> hey, no. and if they graduate high school and they decide to not go to college and they're just going to crash at mom's house. Cool. Every Sunday morning, you're going to come to uh, church with me. Yes. And you have to make peace with they're growing men and they are looking at dad as to what am I supposed to look like on a day-to-day -day basis? And so they're, they're going to take a large, um, like that's going to be the picture that they just naturally want to emulate. And so maybe the bigger conversation is with your husband. Maybe not. Maybe that's a fruitless conversation. You may have had that a million times. <laughs> but here's, 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 I have no data to back up what I'm about to say, okay? This is anecdotal. But what I notice a lot is, barring some sort of, like, assault or, so, like, a, a big internal trauma, okay? What often matters for kids in their continuation of participating in faith activities, still believing and not only just I believe in God, but living that out, mm -hmm. including church attendance. Often, it's congruence. Do you know what that word means? Please For, expand. Congruence as far as... Ba basically, is my mom and dad the same person at home as they are pretending to be in this church building place? Yes. Okay. I get it. And in church... If they're sitting there and the pastor is saying, you have to ask for forgiveness. And you go home and mom and dad never ask for forgiveness. Mm -hmm. If they go to church and they say, you have to have mercy. You have to keep your eyes open for people on the margins that society is kicked to the side. Mm -hmm. And you have to invite them into your home. Then they come home and all they hear is you making fun of people who are different than you, who have less than you, who have different ways of seeing the world in you, then it's incongruent. It doesn't match. Yes. And they don't want anything to do with the, the lack, it, it, the, the lack of congruence, the lack of things matching feels unsafe to a kid. So they opt out. Yes. And then they just do what they see. And if they see dad with a 12 pack on Saturday nights and, kind of stumbling through the morning, unshaven, grabbing a cup of coffee, that's, that's the road they're going to take. That's the map they have. Yeah, I think part of what they say is the incongruence that they see. I mean, not, not with the family activity as much, you know. I mean, I can see several areas, but, uh, but with just the religion in general. Yeah, and some of that is... I want 15 and 16 and 17, 18 and 25 year olds. I want people to have that. Yeah. Because a lot of times churches have completely failed in that. They are incongruent. Yeah. They're, 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 em they're embarrassing and disgustingly incongruent. Yes. Yeah. How often have you seen people <laughs> or heard churches and you think, are we reading the same book? <sighs> right? So they're right. They're right. And they're also, by the way, faith feels really heavy to you. They're also noticing this with their politicians and they're noticing this with their teachers. Oh, definitely. Right. It's different when you're 17 and you start to recognize a hangover and then you see your social studies teacher come in one, <laughs> one Monday morning. You're like, Oh, <laughs> right. Like, oh, you're a person. Yeah. Right. Um, yeah. and so you, you, they're, they're, they're coming of age to be able to see the world, begin to slowly see the world as it really is. And picking on church, a bunch of hypocrites. I mean, that's, that's an easy thing. 
That doesn't bother me when a 15-year-old or a 16-year-old or a 25-year-old says 15 or 16 or 25-year-old things. It's okay. What I want you, what, what I'd love for them is to be able to articulate it and for you to be honest. Yeah. The Bible does say they're going to know each other by how we love one another. And we are really mean to other Christians. We're awful. We are supposed to take care of widows and orphans and we don't. Or maybe yeah. we do. Maybe we do. Right? I, but I think it's being honest about those things. And when your kid feels heard and they don't feel like you're trying to cover up the, like you're a politician trying to cover up the negative stuff and just like, look at the good, look at the good, look at the good. Then they're more willing to sit in that, that authenticity. Yep, there is some evil out there. There is some folks who claim one thing and they're living completely different. You're right. There's a lot of that on both sides of the aisle. It's, it's, it's just all over the place. And as for me and my house, this is who we're going to be. Yeah, I think it's a hard thing for me to to set boundaries with them um, on, or rules, hard rules. So this has been probably the area where I have the most why? hard rules about them continuing to attend. Why, why, why are you um, scared to love your kids with boundaries? Um. Um, I don't know. Um, do you love my kids with boundaries? Wow. <laughs> um, the greatest gift you can give your boys is boundaries. It's the greatest gift. Okay. I'll see it as a gift and not as And Veronica, a hold, I grew up four hours from you. I grew up four hours from you. I know. It's hard. It's very, very hard. And you feel like every time I put up a boundary, I am severing my relationship with them. You're not. You're building deep, deep roots. And 16-year-olds say 16-year-old things like, that's stupid. Oh, my God. Are you freaking kidding me? I can't. They say stuff like that because they're 16. That's why as a society, we don't let them vote or buy beer because they're 16, <laughs> right? <laughs> I think, and it's also because it's so different than than the way I grew up, mm -hmm. right? So I would never dare to say anything back to my parents, you know, or or say it's a waste of my time, or you know. So it, so I guess the change is also kind of hard. The expectation of how come you're pushing back so much? Like, here's but, why. Here's why kids push back because they want to see if it's going to hold. Yep, that's true. They want to see if it's going to hold. Well, these are persistent teenagers. <laughs> oh, absolutely. But here's the thing. You cave a lot, don't you? Yes. Yes. Yes, so I have. why wouldn't they push? That's how you've trained them. And by the way, that's going to make them a lot of money when they become salesmen. It's going to make, well, them, so. it's going to make them powerful <laughs> CEOs. We can't do it. It's impossible. And they're going to be like, nothing's impossible. Right? Yeah. That's, that's how you trained them. So I do a nice man. <laughs> <laughs> but you also have to show them there are things in relationships that I don't move on. If you can live in my house, I don't, I don't, I don't, we, we go to church on Sunday. It's just how that rolls here. If you live in my house, we're going to fill in the blank. Any, any number of things, fill in the blank there. In my house, you can swear and run your mouth out with your buddies. I can't stop you out there. In this house, we don't curse at each other, period. In this house, everybody sits around the table for dinner, period. In this house, we turn the phones off at this time, period. And make those boundaries. That's so dumb. I can't even believe it's a waste of time, hypocrite. I, okay, you can say whatever you want. I don't care if you like me. I need you to know that I love you. And my job is to keep you safe for as long as I can. In whatever way I can. And so you're right on. I Again, I bristle at the word force. I want to back up. So I guess at the end of the day, like if they keep pushing and pushing. You can't force a 16-year-old into a car. He's a big kid. Like physically, I cannot force you into this. I can force my eight-year-old daughter. She's little, and I've got bigger muscles than her. But boundaries are good. 
And if they choose, I'm not getting in that car and I'm not going to church. Cool. You've chosen to any number of consequences. I'm going to hold you accountable. And you made that choice, teenager, not me. So we're going to go. And then maybe the harder conversation is, Dad, are we living on a day-to-day basis the things that we are saying we value to these kids? And I know that's a tough conversation. It's really tough. Love your kid with boundaries. Be firm. Let him see, hey, this is important to mom. Hopefully dad gets on board and says, I'm going to start living this too. Whew. That was tough, man. Teenagers are tough. Hang in there, Veronica. They're lucky to have you. Put up some boundaries and hold firm. They're worth it. 